Leaving so soon? Oh, hello, Dave. How about driving out to the country club with me for lunch? Fresh air will do you good. I'm sorry, Dave. I've made other arrangements. Oh, I see. Well, my boy, the market looks better this morning. If it opens as well as this on Monday, we can start liquidating some of that million dollars in securities we've been hanging on to. Yes, Dave. Well, have a nice weekend. Hmm? Huh? All right. Pretty heavy. Some more homework? Not exactly. I'm just washing up a little business I've had on my mind for a long time. Now, don't overdo it. Remember what happened to your father. Yes. I remember. Well, if the weather's fine, I may drive over to your place on Sunday. You better phone first, Dave. I've made tentative plans. Oh, don't make any change in account of me. Have a good time. I'll see you Monday. Monday. Goodbye, Dave. Bye, Nick. Overseas reservations. I want to confirm my ticket on today's flight to Shanghai. Oh, what is the name, please? Henry Nicholas. I made the reservation a week ago. Just a moment, Mr. Nicholas. Hello, yes, Mr. Nicholas. Everything is in order. You're on flight 649 from Municipal Airport. Your ticket is at the reservation desk there. Departure time is 10.30 o'clock. Thanks very much. You're welcome. I am the resurrection and the light, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We brought nothing into this world, it is certain we carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. feet will be nice and smooth. And you'll have a 56 mile an hour tailwind, which will take you across in a hurry. Good deal. You figured the time yet? Here she is. Figures eight hours plus 30 minutes. <laughs> we'll have to slow up. You're coming on schedule. <laughs> I'll find it for us, honey. You run out to the airplane and check the equipment. They should be loading the dining service by now. Will do. boxes and bags. Your name, please. United Flight 649 for Honolulu and connections to the Orient. Now loading at gate 7. All aboard, please.
Your ticket and baggage check, Mr. Marker. The flight is loading at gate seven. Thank you. Los Angeles Tower, this flight 649, ready for taxi instructions. Over. Before takeoff, you move to the rear compartment. I have a friend there. I think we can manage that if we hurry. Thanks. Here you are, sir. I'll take your hat and coat. What do you mean? Big business, Cynthia. Very big business. Besides, uh, being a very lovely woman, you are a very fortunate one. Go on. I happen to be fortunate, too, because I am the only one who knows you murdered your husband. I knew how dangerous George could be, and I wanted to protect you. After it happened, I left and waited. Waited for what? The insurance company's decision to pay off. But they haven't. They were. And then... What? I want half of it. George Strong was rotten. 
He was. <laughs> if it pleases you to think it, so am I. But that's of little consequence. I've made you a proposition that has but one answer. I'll give you until one hour after we reach Honolulu to accept it. If you don't... Your dinner? No, thank you. Your dinner, sir. Thank you. Your dinner, sir? Your dinner, sir. It's really delicious. <laughs> it's amazing what they can do on these planes. What a nuisance. Excuse me. sitting next to me. What about him? He's been threatening me. What can I do to help? Pretend that you know me. Please. you to meet Mr. Nicholas. He's an old friend of mine. I haven't seen him for a long time. And here he was sitting right opposite us. It's a small world, isn't it? Yes, it is very tight. Mr. Nicholas. That's right. Strange how old friends meet, isn't it? An old friend, Mr. Nicholas. Yes, Alan. You can't imagine how glad I am to see him. Oh, uh, this is Alan Marker. How do you do? Hello, Mr. Marker. Enjoying the flight? I was. Pardon my mentioning it, but for old friends, you seem to have very little to say. The most enduring kind of friendship is the strong, silent type. Traveling on business? Yes, my own. What's your line? Oh, any number of things. Right now, I'm busily engaged in the process of thinking. Thinking? Yes, thinking how perfectly obvious it is you've never met before. <laughs> Can you prove that? Yes. What was her maiden name? Well, I never bothered to find out. You know, when she was little, I used to call her Snooks. Now that she's grown up, I just call her Spook. At least you know the answers better than you do the girl. A stewardess? Yes, sir. I feel the need of a drink. Is that possible? Certainly, sir. What would you like to have? Cynthia? Nothing for me. I'll have a Manhattan, please. I'd like a brandy, Napoleon brandy. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We don't have Napoleon brandy. Would you care for something else? I never drink anything else. Very well, sir. Let's do something to pass the time. How about some gin rummy? Make it poker and I'll join you. After all, we are old friends, aren't we? Perhaps you can use Mr. Nicholas' briefcase as a paper. Works fine. Now, what's the limit? Or perhaps that's a superfluous question. 
I think they're all playing for the same stakes. Cynthia? United Flight 649, 10 miles east of the field. Landing instructions, please. Flight 649, you're cleared into traffic. Landing on runway 8, over. Roger. We're coming into Honolulu, sir. Will you please fasten your seatbelt? Very pleasant game. <laughs> now that it's over, I can tell you I could have won a lot more. How? I still have an ace up my sleeve. Uh, where are you staying in Honolulu? I haven't decided. Oh, and you, Cynthia? Same place. Checking in for only a few hours, sir? That's right. I just want to freshen up a bit before I catch tonight's plane for Shanghai. Front. Room 643. Thank you. Oh, uh, I'd like to put this in your hotel safe until I leave. Why, certainly, sir. But you'll have to claim it before 10 o'clock. You see, the office safe can't be open between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. Oh. Never mind. I'll, I'll keep it with me. Reservation, sir?
I'll get me United Airlines reservations, please. Hello? This is Mr. Nicholas speaking. I want to confirm my reservation on tonight's plane to Shanghai. Good. I'll be there. Another one, madam. Yes, please. Make mine brandy, please. Napoleon brandy. You have the persistency of a bulldog, haven't you? And the bite, if necessary. Charming place, isn't it? It could be. I've always loved the tropical way of living. You mean without working for it? Oh, Jim, you know, I mean the romance of it. The natives enjoy the beautiful things in life. So do I. You're beautiful, Cynthia. They tell me the housing problem is very acute. Apropos of what? I think you'd have trouble finding space under a rock. <laughs> I don't resent that, my dear. Your tongue is merely bitter from the spleen of your conscience. If he could replace the steel strings with those of his soft sturdy bands, wouldn't it remind you of that evening a long time ago? That night at Cannes, the night I introduced you to your late husband. What are you going to do if I don't agree to your... your blackmail? Turn you over to the police and live unhappily ever after. Oh, Alan, since we are supposed to be such good friends, how can you even think of such things? I need money, Cynthia. I've always needed money. So have you. That's why you married George. That's why you killed him. again? You weren't coming, were you? No. I guess I can't blame you. I had no right to involve you in the first place. I sent you the note because I wanted to thank you for your help on the plane. Did it do any good? So much. For the time. 
No, I don't know. All right, you thank me. Now maybe I'll thank you if you'll tell me what it's all about. Who is Alan Marker? And why are you afraid of him? I can't explain all that. I wish I could. But I've got to wait. Will you continue to act the role of an old friend? I don't know. What does it entail? Let's walk. Beautiful island, isn't it? Uh-huh. Just like a page out of a travel folder. Diamond head and the long surf. Music as soft as the sand. And tall palms that bow to the sea. Very pretty. You saw you made this trip, aren't you? Oh, I wouldn't say that. This is just a stopover for me. I still have a long way to go. Where to? Shanghai. Why? What do you mean, why? Oh, nothing. I just had a feeling you're running away from something. You're not very happy about it. What makes you say that? I suppose it's that unreliable feminine instinct called intuition. While we're on the subject of travel, what are you doing here? I don't know. I wanted to get away from something, and I failed miserably. You mean Alan Marker? It's part of it. I had hoped that I could forget everything that's past. I was looking forward to the beginning of a bright new life. Let's pretend it that way. Take me to dinner tonight and cocktails and we'll dance under the stars. Am I asking too much? Sounds very enticing. But I'm catching my plane tonight. Come on, I'll take you back to the hotel.
going somewhere. For someone without any plans, you seem to be packing in a hurry. Do you usually enter people's rooms without knocking? Skip that. What are you packing for? I'm leaving. With Marker? Of course not. If he even finds out. I've got to hurry. Now, just a moment. I'm in a little trouble myself now, and it might be you know the answers. I don't know what you mean. Maybe not, but I think you know someone who does. This whole deal smells a little of halibut to me. First, you pick me up on an airplane. You could phrase that a little better. You tell me you're being threatened by a man, but you don't tell me why. But I can't tell you why. Then I find you sitting at a bar, drinking with him. Of course, you did slap his face. But that could be part of the act to arouse my interest. To get me to take a nice long walk on the terrace, for instance, while Marker... Yes, what are you getting at? Plenty. Where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. You dumb up at just the right times, don't you? I think you've got a plenty smart mind. A million dollar mind. Where's Marker and where were you going? Or is he already gone and you're going to meet him somewhere? On the contrary, my dear fellow. I believe she intended avoiding me completely. Well, this is really a cozy little scene. If you are trying to hold Cynthia's hand, you find it much lower down her arm. Leaving so soon, Cynthia? Oh, don't bother answering. <laughs> it's getting so no one can't trust anyone. Can one? Let's skip all the small talk. Where's my briefcase? Your briefcase? Why should I know where it is? Because I've got a pretty good hunch you came to my room and took it. And if you did, you're liable to find yourself in plenty of hot water. And if I do, I won't be the only one who gets boiled. Do you think Alan came to your room and stole something? You're the only two people I've had contact with. And if it wasn't Alan, it could have been me? Certainly. I find him here in your room. There's no reason why you couldn't have been in his. Oh, uh, by the way, <laughs> what was in the briefcase? It was filled with valuables. Oh. Well, why don't you report it to the police? Yes. Why don't you? Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I don't blame you for not calling in the police. They are such inquisitive devils. Well, personally, I'm bored with the whole thing. Oh, uh, Cynthia, regarding my proposition, I've extended the time another hour. Generosity is one of my many faults. I'll be in the bar if you get tired of renewing your old friendship. What's the proposition he wants an answer to? Like what's in your briefcase, I can't tell you. I still think he stole it. Then why don't you make him admit it? He said he'd be in the bar. Yeah. I think I will. But I think I'd better keep you with me. All right. Yes, sir. What do you have? Have you seen that fellow who got his face slapped earlier this evening? No, sir. Not since the lady put her fingerprints on his cheek. Thank you. just a few moments ago. Go 
to the airport? Yeah, but it's a long ways around. Well, take it. I've got to lose that car. Pass him and head him off. Look out for that car. This is United Flight 648, ready to taxi. What's delaying this flight? Breaking on two late passengers, 648. Roger, Tower. This is the last call for Flight 648, leaving for San Francisco, now loading at gate two. This is the last call. All aboard, please. considerable trouble to take it away from you. How low can you get? Blackmail is bad enough, but a common thief. I so far have taken nothing from his case, except this gun. Did you say blackmail? That's what he's following me for. Now, like a fool, I let you bring me right back to him. For the moment, Cynthia, I've lost interest in you. Uh, financially, that is. Um, did she by chance tell you what inspired me to, uh, forgive the word, blackmail her? No. Uh-huh. And I'll bet he didn't tell you what's in this briefcase either, did he? No. <laughs> there should never be secrets between old friends like you. very fortunate that it's in my hands for safekeeping. Because you see, my dear, I found out that the briefcase belongs to a Mr. Nicholas Lawrence. Now, if Mr. Henry Nicholas takes it from me, why? Naturally, I'd be forced to have the captain radio ahead to the San Francisco police. Because you see, my dear, your friend Henry stole it. San 
Francisco Tower. This United Flight 648, 15 miles west of the field. Landing instructions, please. One clear to enter traffic. Landing runway two over. Thank you, Tower. Look, Marker, I'll make a deal with you. Name it. 50-50. On that basis, I'll still have to collect from the ascent here to make up the deficit. Yes. It's agreed. We'll arrange the details on the ground. The Golden Gate. <laughs> they must have named that bridge for me. Would you all kindly remain in your seats until the agricultural inspector comes through? He just wants to make sure you aren't carrying any forbidden flowers or fruits onto the mainland. Thank you. Are you bringing in any flowers, fruits, seeds, or anything like that? No, sir, we aren't. Thank you. You can get off the plane now. Are you bringing in any fruit, flowers, seeds, or anything like that? No, I'm not. Thank you. you Thank you. You can get off the plane now. Do you have any fruit, flowers, seeds, or anything like that? No, no fruits, flowers, seeds. Just a moment. I was told that you're bringing in a species of Vandasaurelia. Now, I'm awfully sorry, mister, but we have strict orders against allowing any Vandasaurelia into the States. I wouldn't know a... What did you call that? Vandasaurelia? Uh, I wouldn't know one of those if it bit me. Did that... Black-haired foreign fella tell you I was carrying one of those things in? Well, yes, he did. Uh, well, I, it was just a joke, officer. He's a very old friend of ours. Isn't he, dear? Uh, yes, very old. It was just a joke, officer, believe me. Uh, may we go now? I'm sorry to detain you, but I'll have to look through your bags. Bags? Well, we don't have any bags. No bags? Nobody ever flies this run without no bags. Just keep your seats a moment, please, while I let the rest of the passengers off. Are uh, you bringing in any flowers, fruit, seeds, or anything like that? I'll find him if I have to comb every street and hotel in San Francisco by hand. Driver, how many streets are there in San Francisco? Lady, did you ever count the wrinkles on a prune? Come on, get going. No, sir. There's no Mr. Marker registered here. I'm sorry, sir. There's no one by that name registered here. I'm getting awfully hungry. There's a nice little restaurant. We haven't time. Keep going, driver. Marker. Marker. Sorry, he's not registered. No, sir, there's no Mr. Marker registered here. Oh, may I help you, madam? I know just the place down near Fisherman's Wharf. Good food, soft candlelight, and sweet music. Any place to relax for a few minutes. The beat of my heart repeats, you're part of me. Good evening, sir. You Good evening. Table for two? Yes, please. This way, please. One moment with you means more than all eternity. The rarest of wines 
I've tasted at times have thrilled me, but never filled me with such inspiration. Still hungry? Are you? No. Thirsty? Mm -hmm. Champagne, cold and dry. Yes, sir. With your fascination, you are my destiny. The loveliness you possess gets the best of me. Our fate was kind, it showed me the way to find my destiny. Well, I hate to admit it, but I'm licked. <laughs> this is very funny. This whole incident, very funny. I make perfect plans for a magnificent future. Then out of all the boats, planes, and trains in the world, I buy a ticket on the one plane and sit in the one seat that could get me into trouble. Very funny. I don't think it's so funny. You don't, huh? You know, for a casual acquaintance, you're a pretty expensive girl. You've cost me just exactly one million bucks. There are a few questions I'd like to ask you, and I think you owe me a few answers. What would you like to know? What has Marker got on you? I murdered my husband. Did you? I don't blame you for not wanting to talk about it. But I do want to talk about it. I find myself wanting to tell you everything about me. I'm sorry. I hate weeping women. <laughs> My husband was a winner. He won every game he played, including the one he played with me eight years ago when we were married. He was a great surgeon. His patients all survived. And their scars healed. With me, it was different. His operations on me were mental. And my scars never healed. You must have known what you were getting into beforehand. I didn't. His charm disappeared after the marriage. He hated everything and everyone, including me. Did you hate him? I don't know. I was so unhappy and miserable that I thought I hated him. Go on. Last week, we were home, having supper after the theater. Alan Marker was there. As usual, George had been drinking too much. As usual, he was insulting me. Well, I, I think I'd better push along. It's getting quite late. Don't bother, Cynthia. I see myself out. <coughs> Good night, George. Good night. Well, Cynthia, I recognize that expression. I've seen it so often. It combines reproach, anger, and indignant humiliation. Shall we have another turbulent little scene? I rather enjoy them. They compensate somewhat for certain 
domestic deficiencies. Where are you going? To my room. To lock your door behind you as usual? No, my darling. I have some interesting information for you. Tonight, we're going to alter that routine. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. You interest me far too much. Please, George. Don't annoy me with your pleading. I'm not going to let you go. That's a story, and it's the truth. So you ran away. Why did Martha follow you? He says he never left the penthouse. He was watching through the terrace windows and insists that I planned it all. He says that I pushed George over the terrace, purposely. What does he want from you? Half the indemnity and me. What has Marka been to you? Nothing. I've known him a long time. That's all. I think I'd better go. Why? Because everything I've told you is the truth. And I don't think you believe me. I believe you. But I also believe you're a little fool. You can't run away from something like that. Do as I say, not as I do. You seem to forget that I met you while you were running away. You haven't told me why. Okay, we're a pair of fools. When I was a kid, I used to watch the railroad tracks. Wonder where they led to. I used to watch ships sail over the horizon. Wonder where they were going. Then I grew up. I came into my inheritance. Poor little rich boy. Not by a long shot. My dad left me a raft of debts and the same kind of driving ambition that finally killed him. He's a great guy. Hard worker. Spent a lifetime at a desk. His ambition was to own one of the largest fortunes in the world, and he did for a while. And one day he stood at his desk with a head full of worry, an empty wallet, and a sudden pain. The obituaries were great. So I pitched in, cleaned up the bets, and soon I found myself working Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays, slugging it out in the battle for the buck. It took me 15 years to realize I was walking step for step in the same exact tracks my father made. One day, someone would find me too, dead in Dad's tracks. He didn't know it, but he died a little every day. I decided to reverse the procedure. I decided to see for myself what was on the other side of the horizon. And so you ran away. Was the money yours? No. It belonged to lots of people. Tom the Brute Black, Bertha the Sewing Machine Girl, and others. this effect on everybody. What effect? The 
first time, I feel ashamed. What are you going to do now? I don't know. I haven't thought that far. Run away some more? Think I ought to give myself up? It isn't for me to say. But I know what I'm going to do. If anyone suspects me of murdering my husband, I'm going back to face them. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life running away from something. I wish I could help you. I've got a few troubles of my own to face. <laughs> we met at the wrong time in our lives, didn't we? It should have been much earlier. Or, or much later. With all the trouble you have ahead of you, do you think you could save a little time to see me? I think maybe it would be better if we didn't see each other. It would only complicate matters. Maybe so. I have an idea. We didn't get much out of Honolulu, did we? Too soon. But not too late. Let's set a sort of tentative rendezvous. One month from tonight at uh, 8.15, if we both get our lives straightened out and we both feel the same way, let's meet again on the terrace in Honolulu. Like my idea? What is it? Your coffee, sir. Good evening. The woman I gave the order to was middle-aged, lumpy and <laughs> with a slight mustache. That's Mrs. Garrett, the owner. You're very pretty. Thanks. Is there anything else? Perhaps. We might talk a little. This coffee's rather weak. Suppose you could find some stronger beverage? Can I at least see you to a cab? It's better this way. Maybe so. Will I see you in Honolulu? I hope so. If not, I'll be thinking of you. Goodbye. A bottle of brandy, please. What kind do you want? Mm, oh, any kind. Any kind, so long as it's Napoleon brandy. But it's expensive. <laughs> he doesn't care. He never drinks anything else. Oh, I see. My last bottle, Napoleon. And the best.
to put Tom on it. <laughs> record time. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Can I take your coat? Thank you. Bart and the Chaudrier judgment, my dear. This brandiest, most delicate bouquet of all. Now, these are not exactly the most glamorous containers, but we will use our imagination. As we look at them, they will soon become the most beautiful bowls of crystal. Mm. <laughs> Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Dave. Have a good weekend? Great. You must have. You look like a million dollars. Yes, patch and all. How'd you get it? Did you bump into a door? Well, not exactly. I called you yesterday. Your man said you weren't home. No, uh, I wasn't home. Dave, I made a big decision last night. I'm going to put in one good, hard month solid work, and then I'm going to take a nice, long vacation. Fine. Fine. That's OK with me. You need a vacation. Where are you going? Now, I'll send you a postal card. <laughs> you ready to go to work? Right. Now, what was that idea you had about liquidating some of those securities? Well, here's the plan. But you have to be very careful with this. A million dollars is a lot of money. 